Good morning, everybody. I hope your holidays have been fun and rejuvenating, although I suspect, as in my life, you may have seen a few disruptions to your children's sleep. Uh, today, I'm going to be addressing a question that came in a couple of weeks ago about a 14-month-old whose sleep has been derailed since starting daycare. It's from Michelle Chan, who writes, Hi, I have a sleep-trained 14-month-old that started daycare two months ago. Since he's been a horrible night, uh, since then he's been a horrible night sleeper. He now wakes up in the middle of the night around 2 a.m., crying and won't go down for at least one to two hours. Bedtime, he will not go to sleep unless we hold him. When we try to transfer him to the crib, he wakes and cries and cries. I've been trying to do cried out with check-ins, even though the check-ins make him more angry. So sometimes I don't even go in. What can I do to stop these middle-of-the-night wakes? He's on one nap, wakes at 7, and bedtime is 8, 8.30. Thank you. Okay, my first question for you is, when did he switch to one nap? Um, while most babies switch around 12 months, this is more of a cultural thing than a biological thing, um, which biologically babies transition closer to 18 months. But the reason for the 12-month switch is because most daycares do one nap and most kids are in daycare around 12 months. So there's a few things to consider. Um, he, if he's transitioned to one nap prematurely, um, this might be the cause of the midnight wake-ups that last a long time. And it's, the reason for this is because if he is overtired, caused by a premature nap drop, then his body will be producing cortisol and that will inhibit sleep. Um, secondly, starting a day, starting daycare is a major transition for a kid. It's a new environment, there are new rules, there are new caretakers, new stimulation, and there's a distancing from familiarity and from mom or whoever the primary caregiver has been up to until that point. Um, so this, this transition can cause a lot of insecurity in little kids. And you might not see um, an expression of this insecurity in the daytime, but if it's there, you will certainly see it at night because it is at night that we as human beings are the most vulnerable. Um, the transition from wakefulness into sleep is a really tender moment in our day. Um, again, I'm going to say the word vulnerable because in order to transition from wakefulness to sleep, one must be vulnerable. Uh, and when you feel insecure, vulnerability feels really dangerous. So this might be some of the reason that you're seeing resistance to sleep. If he's only falling asleep in your arms, it's because he feels secure. And when you put him in his own bed, the insecurity comes back and he wakes back up. So that's going to be something that needs to be um, addressed. Um, yes, yeah, so again, there's two major things I suspect that are going on here. The major change to his day-to-day -day life, which is causing insecurity and inhibiting sleep and a sleep debt that is causing cortisol production, which is inhibiting sleep. So with these things in mind, I don't advise a cried out approach, at least not yet. Um, if he's crying because he needs more of you, then to withdraw you will not solve the problem. The most it will do is teach him that you will not respond to his needs, which I'm assuming is not your goal. Instead, I'm assuming that your goal is to have him sleeping comfortably and easily uh, with a strong sense of security and connection. In which case, you're going to take a three-pronged attack. First of all, get his cortisol levels down. If he's transitioned from two naps to one prematurely, ask the daycare if he can go back to two naps. Uh, if that's not possible, um, and even if it is possible, I would advise you to start bringing his bedtime earlier so inch by inch, squeak it back to around 7 p.m. At his age, he should be getting about 14 hours uh, sleep in a 24-hour period, 14 hours to or more. Um, so don't force it, but aim for more sleep. So start by making his bedtime a little earlier. And again, like I said, inch by inch, so 10, 15 minutes a day. Um, don't rush it, but go in that direction. Um, and the second thing I'd like you to do is to change the narrative around bedtime and around your expectations with bedtime. So yes, he should be sleeping independently and through the night. Although I'm going to say that should is an assertion of your goals and expectations and not a general should for all babies and all toddlers. Um, the should depends on every individual family with their different goals and expectations and so on. 
but for your case, that's what you want. So yes, okay, I'm affirming that for you. He should be sleeping through the night. He should be going to sleep independently. But if the underlying conditions of insecurity and cortisol are not dealt with, then cry it out is not going to work. So in addition to managing his cortisol levels through increased sleep, I advise giving him the space to express his feelings. Uh, cortisol is released most effectively through tears. So if he needs to cry, let him cry in your arms. If he's mad at you, let him be mad at you in your presence. Um, send him the message. Your feelings are valid. You are allowed to have them. I am here to support you. Support, support, support. Show him that you are on his team. And then, finally, um, be careful with how you do cry it out. So in order for cry it out to be effective, um, aside from the necessary prep work of making sure that he feels emotionally sound and his cortisol is okay, um, you must be consistent. If you waffle in your response to him, you're going to confuse him and prolong the tears. Uh, this is unnecessarily stressful for everybody and can be potentially traumatizing and if that's the case, the whole thing will backfire on you. So be careful. Um, but again, with cried out, don't even start, um, even if you're totally consistent, don't start until you are certain that all his needs are being met. And so in particular, I'm concerned about his need for his body to be physically ready for sleep in order for your expectation that he falls asleep to be met. This is the cortisol stuff. Um, um, so ensuring that his cortisol levels are low um, through ensuring he gets enough sleep and allowing him to cry out his feelings when they come. Um, but adequate diet, the timing of his sleep, and other components are important as well for, for being physically ready. But from the information that I have, that's, that's the biggest piece I can offer. Um, I'm also concerned with his emotional needs. So if he is feeling insecure from this transition to daycare, which is very likely because who isn't stressed out by a major change in their life, then you need to put in extra work to assure him of his place in your family. So remember the two fundamental needs that all humans share is to belong and to feel significant. But what can you do to show him that he belongs in your family? What can you do to let his heart meet your heart and feel safety and comfort there? And what can you do to show him that he is significant? What rituals can you develop that give him a role and allow him some control? What can you do to let his heart meet your heart and see that he has an impact on you? Naturally, he does have an impact on you, but unless you create the channels for this impact to be positive, something that makes you proud, then he might seek out channels that he is certain will get a response, but those can sometimes be maligned or unwanted um, efforts. So crying in the middle of the night, for example, um, or having outbursts can be signs of needing to feel significant, but not having the appropriate channel to express that need. And so this can, without having the channels, you can exacerbate the situation, the sleep that you're seeing. Now I'm stretching a little bit because I don't know the full in, ins and outs of your situation, but hopefully this gives you a good place to start. And please let me know if you have any additional questions. Uh, have a great weekend, everybody, and I will see you in the new year.